So what I'll be teaching you today is how you can plant your own code into a website, allowing you remote control of the entire site. You go over to a website and you'll be able to figure out what kind of programming language are they written in. And once you figure out what code you're written in, you'll be able to send your own malicious code into the site, allowing you to remotely control it. And not only that, towards the end of the video, I'll be showing you a specific tool that you can use that can allow you to easily remotely control the entire computer. So yes, the answer is it's game over. You now have full remote control of the entire server. So the first thing that you have is of course a website. I mean, without a website, what are you going to hack? So you have the website over here and you have different types of input fields, input forms, where you can end up entering your own malicious payload over here. And in this case, say for example, you have Mr. Hackerloy visiting your website and Mr. Hackerloy on the right would then be able to craft his payload that would allow us to run different types of shell commands, execution commands, dependent on say what kind of programming language is it running on. So maybe it could be on PHP, it could be on Node.js and the list goes on. And this is what we call as a code injection attack. Now, before we go any further, remember to smash the like button so that you don't get hacked. And at the same time, turn on notification to the channel so that you know exactly when you got hacked. No, I am just kidding. No kidding. So now over here, we have our good friend, Mr. Carl Linux. So this is going to be our ethical hacking operating system they'll be using as part of targeting the site. So over here, you can see we're on the following of PHP code injection. So it could be any other types of code that is written for serving all this different type of content dependent on the website. So one of the things that we first do is to identify what the website is running on. I can see very clearly over here, we have the following of the IP address as well as the extension of .php. So this means that the backend compute, the backend server is running PHP programming language. At the same time, as you can see over here on top right corner, we have the following of Weblizer. So if you click onto the open extension, it automatically scans for us and we're able to identify the programming language. And in this case, we have the identification of the programming language of PHP 2. Now, as you can see on the website, we can click on to reflecting back your message. And when we clicked on it over here, you can see the following of the response of tests. And the reason why this is occurring is if you were to go over into the URL segment, you'd be able to see that there is a question mark message equal test. So we have a new parameter over here that allow us to then send that message or that value over into the site and the site picks up the value and reflects it back over here. So what this means is that it's taking in the user input, which means that possibly there's a chance that it may not be sanitized. It may not be scanned for malicious code. And that is exactly what we are looking for. So the very first thing that we're looking out for is say, if we were to change the message over here to say hacker loy, do we also see it being reflected? And of course the answer is yes, it's being reflected right here. So now if I was to put a semicolon colon and followed by PHP info, right? Followed by the open and close bracket, I go ahead and hit enter on that. Boom, we can see all this different information right here of the PHP version. All right, and over here, we can see, for example, we could possibly try to look out for password and see whether there are any specific values that we can find. So in this case, we have MySQL dot default underscore password. And of course, in this case, we have no value. So again, that could be many other different types of sensitive information that can be disclosed as part of PHP info. And of course, we can also see right here, it has a support for SQLite. Next up, to find out who you're operating as, you can enter a system followed by say, who am I? All right, followed by closing off of the bracket, hit enter on that, and let's see what we get. So in this case, let me go ahead and spell that correctly. All right, system, who am I, hit enter on that, and we have the following result of dub 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 dash data. All right, now tell me, what other interesting things can we do now that we have execution against the system? We can also figure out where exactly is our current working directory. So I can enter the following of PWD, which is print working directory. And we have the following of var www BWAPP. So what I can do next is I can go ahead and enter the following of say LS dash L, hit enter on that. And we can see as a result of here, all of this are different directories as well as the files that are residing within the current working directory. Next up, what we're doing over here is to list only the directories because we're trying to figure out possibly there's a place that stores the SQLite file, which may contain all of those juicy passwords. And you can see from the results right here, we have admin slash, we have apps, we have DB, 
All right, we have fonts, images, and so on and so forth. So all this are very important information. And there are two of these directories that we're aiming for. So one is the DB, the other is the directory of passwords. Next up, you can see over here, we change up the command a little more. So we go over the system, ls dot slash db so we're looking over into the db directory and we can see right here we have a file called hackerloy bwapp dot sqlite and the other one over here we have the ls dot slash passwords directory and we can see right at the bottom with heroes.xml web dot config dot bak wp dash config dot bak so all this possibly backup files some kind of files over there that could be containing some juicy information like passwords now the take it to the next level is to start up our listener. So enter NC NLVP 4444. So this is to start up our Netcat listener so that we have shell over into the computer. So what I can do here is to enter IP ADDR and you can see right here, we have the IP address of 182.168.0.117. And this is the hacker's IP address or Mr. Hackerloss IP address. Now, right here, we have a new set of payloads. So in this case, we're using Netcat and then we're connecting over to this IP address, to this port number, and then we are allowing the access of Beanbash. So this gives us remote control of the website. And once you're ready in three, two, one, hit enter and that boom, go back over into terminal, done. It's game over. We are in. We have full access. We can enter print working directory. We can enter who am I? We can enter LS. I can go over into say DB and I can enter LS again, All right? So what I can do here is I can go ahead and do a cat bwapp.sql. I hit enter on that. Wow, look at that. These are all juicy information that we have right here. I can scrub a little more. We can see all these different details right here and possibly try to view them using a SQLite browser. And so I've already downloaded the file. And now here on DB browser for SQLite, I can click onto open database. I can go ahead and open up this database, which is bwabb.sqlite. And we can see here, we can click on our browse data. All right, we can select onto the table. In this case, we have the users table. And we got a couple of interesting information here. We have the login of AIM. We have another login of B. And we have the following interesting information here, which is password. And of course, this is not the real password. So what we can do is to identify exactly what is the algorithm behind this password. So it has gone through some kind of transformation. If I go ahead and enter hash identifier, hit enter on that, I can paste the hash value over here and it checks for us. All right, what is the possible hash type? And the other thing that we can do right here is go ahead into say crackstation.net, paste the value right here, click onto I'm not a robot. All right, so it's challenging me for the select all squares with traffic lights, click verify, hopefully it works. Click crack hashes and let's take a look at the password. And right here, we got the result. The password is BUGBOT. And now I'm going to introduce to you a very interesting tool that you can use that is going to be even fancier. So if you go over on the top right corner and what you can do here is go ahead and select under more tools and then click under web developable tools. And you can see over here, we have the following of PHP session ID as well as the security level and what we can do here is go ahead and use a tool called comics so what it does for us is that it allows us the ability to be able to remotely control the computer but in a fancier way so what i can do now is go ahead and enter comics hit enter on that and we can see over here all right this is an automated all-in-one operating system command injection exploitation tool. Sounds really cool, sounds super cool. So what I've written here is comics followed by the target URL, all right, followed by the following of the cookie value. So this is the cookie value that we saw earlier from the browser. So we're reusing that so we have a successful attack against the site. And once you're ready in three, two, one, hit enter on that. And we are now testing connection to a target URL. And then from there on, we'll be able to gain remote control of the target system, all right? So heading back over into terminal, you can see over here, heuristic test shows that get parameter message might not be injectable, okay. So let's go ahead and see what else we got. All right, you can see the following here. And we've sent a payload over here, which is task system, who am I, dot print, echo the following. All right, followed by the end of this, and we were able to ensure that injection went through. All right, so it's vulnerable. And of course I enter yes, so we want a pseudo terminal shell. So 
this is pretty much it. We are in. We have gained full control of it. Enter. Who am I? It gets the information back from the server. I can enter PWD, which is print working directory once more. And again, we are able to navigate across the system. We now have remote control of the entire computer using an automated all-in-one operating system command injection exploitation tool, Comics.